Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and I want to help you feel more confident with your production gear, no matter where you're starting from. Today, we're going to be talking about floor monitors and how to actually get the Behringer X32 set up to feed a floor monitor. Now, floor monitors are great if you have a lot of people that need to listen to one speaker that's on the stage. They're inexpensive and easy to source for your church or venue. Some of them are powered, which means that we can just take an audio signal right into the side of them apply some power also onto the side of that box, and then it's there. Others are a passive floor wedge, which means that you have to have an amplifier external from that speaker. So we would take the audio out of our X32, plug it into an amplifier, plug the output speaker cable of that amplifier into your speaker on stage, and boom, we have a floor wedge. But let's actually see how we route inside the X32 to actually get it there. So the first thing that we need to do is we have our X32 scene here. I have some drums, electric guitar, keys, bass, and my three vocalists right here. However, I haven't set up any of my mix buses here. So if we click Bus Master, we will see all of our mix buses here. We can additionally see it if we go through bus 1 through 8 and bus 9 through 16 on this side, as this is identical to the left side of the board. Just the left side of the board, we have 16 faders. Now, say you have a compact or a different version of the X32, you're only going to be seeing eight channels at a time. So you'll have more buttons on the left side. So you'll just have to tab down until you see the ones that you're wanting to use. Now, there is actually one quick way of adjusting everything on the configuration of our Behringer X32 in regards to our mix buses here, and that's over in the setup menu. So let's go ahead and do that first. Go ahead and click setup. We're going to tab over to config by pressing the page select over. And we can see that this is our current bus configuration. So it says custom and then post fader for the rest of these. Well, there's a lot of different ones that we can go select. So we can go see that we can have 16 pre-fader, or we can have 16 post-fader, or we can have eight pre-fader and eight post-fader, 10 pre-fader, six post-fader, eight pre-fader, some subgroups, post-fader, more subgroups, and more subgroups. Now, if you're wondering what all these mean, I actually have a blog post that I'll link in the description of this video that you can go take a look and actually get an explanation on what all of these different things are. But today, I'm going to select my favorite one, which is our six, six, and four. So that means there's six pre-fader, six subgroups, and six post-fader. This is typically the one that I'm going to be selecting if I'm mixing from front of house and have some monitors that are being fed on stage from front of house. If you are doing something, say a monitor board where this is your monitor mixer, I would either select post-fader for everything or pre-fader for everything. And there's a couple different reasons why for that, but I'm not gonna be getting into that on this video. That'll be a separate video. So today we're going to select the six plus six plus four. Once we do, we can press set, and this is going to wipe out all of the levels that you have on all of your channels going to all of these. So you will need to do this pretty much from the beginning of when you set up, or you will need to reset up all of your sends to all of your mix buses from the channels. So we're gonna go ahead and press confirm. So now we can see that we have six pre-fader, six subgroups, and four post-fader. So let's go ahead and assign one of these to be a floor wedge. So I'm going to select mix bus one and I'm going to then go name it. So we're gonna go over to name an icon. I'm going to make this green just because that's the color that I like to make my floor wedges. And I'm gonna edit the name of this and I'm going to go ahead and call this mon one. So I'm gonna do caps lock and I'm going to go type in mon. Okay, and so we have monitor one selected here. We can see it over here. I'm going to also make a monitor two while I'm here. And we can see that we have uh, the ability to select this and then I can just backspace and add a number two. And then we want to change the color of that. So we can press setup and change this to green. So we have our monitor one and our monitor two. We want to take these and put them up to unity gain, which is zero. And then once we have them here, we're going to need to route them. So we're going to route monitor one to be on XLR out one. 
And if we go look in our routing section, we're going to tab all the way over to out, and we can actually see that this is already set up to Mixbus 1 post fader. And if this wasn't set to Mixbus 1 post fader, all we'd have to do is change this to be from Mixbus 1. We can select that, and then we can go tab down to post fader. We can see that output 2 is assigned to Mixbus 2 post fader. We can additionally use the auxiliary outs, which is the quarter inch outputs on the back of the board. So we can tab over to aux, we can go to aux out one, and I can go select mix bus one post fader and go to output two and set this to mix bus two post fader. Once we've done that, that means that anything that we're sending to Mixbus 1 is going to go to the XLR out on the back of this console on XLR 1, and it's additionally going to go to the auxiliary quarter inch out 1. So let's go ahead and set them some things up to monitor 1. So on the right hand side of the console, I'm going to press bus 1 through 8. And then on the left side of my console, I'm going to have my channels. Now, if you have a smaller version of the X32 that only has eight channels here, you'll have to page through a couple more buttons than I will today. But our monitor one is going to be at the front edge of the stage, and this is going to be one of my vocal wedges. And so let's go ahead and get some monitors going here. So I am going to press sends on fader. Now, sends on fader means that I am going to select this mix bus, and this is going to show me on the left side of the board what is actually being fed to this monitor. And so we can see that I have all of my channels at Unity. This is my front house mix that I have going on into my PA. But I want to see what's actually going to my monitor one here. And I can do that by pressing select, pressing sends on fader. Now, if I'm wanting to turn up my vocals into this monitor, all I will have to do is just raise these up. It's as simple as that. Once I do that, I'm going to want to press the sends on fader button so that I can get back to mixing my front house mix. Now, as we're going through our sound check, our vocalists are asking for a little bit more of the instruments because currently they have nothing. So we can actually do this a couple different ways of turning things up or down in this monitor. I can simply go and select a bass and I can see that I have my bus send section right here. There's four rotary knobs, and then there's four different buttons here. This means that I have selected mix bus one through four. If I have this selected, it's five through eight, so five, six, seven, eight. If I have this selected, this one is nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So if I was wanting to turn the bass up in monitor one, I know that that's mix bus one. So I'm going to select one through four, and I can go ahead and turn this up. If we go to another channel and say we need to raise that up in monitor one, we can simply select one through four and also turn that channel up. We can also go back and just select monitor one and press sends on fader, and then we have all of the adjustments at our fingertips. Once we've done that, we want to press sends on fader, and then we're back to mixing our show. Now let me show you another way of doing this with sends on fader, which you might inadvertently do if you have a channel selected and you press sends on fader. You'll notice that the right side of our X32, or the right bank of faders, now shows us bus 1 through 8 and 9 through 16. I can start adjusting my monitors from the channel side. So I can go and select Vox 1, and I can see that I already have turned this up in monitor 1. And I can turn this up in monitor 2 as well, and go through one by one on my channels and see how they are routed. Now, doing it this way is a little bit slower than if we just go ahead and select here. Now, one tip that I have is using the solo alongside sends on fader. If you have a pair of headphones, you can plug into either side of the X32, or if you have some control room uh, outputs on the back of your board plugged in, you can use those as well. If you press solo, you are not only listening to this, but then if we also have sense on fader here, I can actually adjust what's in this monitor wedge and be listening to it in my solo on either headphones or the near field monitors that I might have. Now, if we move over to this mix, we can also press solo on this and start adjusting in this monitor mix as well. Now, one question that I get is how do I get reverb 
in my monitor? <laughs> it's a question that any vocalist will ask you. And if you have the ability of giving them some reverb, it's an okay thing to do. It does muddy up their mix. So maybe ask them what they are hearing or what they need to feel. But there are a lot of vocalists who do love their reverb. So if they need some reverb, maybe have a conversation with them and say, hey, it's going to make it feel a little bit uh, more muddy in your mix and try to convince them otherwise. But if they won't, if they really, really, really need it, then we, I'll show you that right now. So to get our verb set, we need to send our vocals to one of our mix buses that are hitting our effects section. FX1 is our verb by default. So I'm going to select FX1. I'm then going to press sends on fader, and I'm going to turn these up to zero. Now, this is a post fader send, which means whatever I have set on my front of house mix, if I have these set to zero or unity gain, that mix is being sent to our effects or our reverb in this case. So if I had vocal two set at negative 10 and these at zero, and I was mixing all of these at zero, it would mean that I have zero, zero, and negative 10 being sent to my effects. Hopefully that makes sense. So we now have our effects being sent from our vocals to our effects one. And in our effects rack, we have this vintage room set up. Now this returns on our effects returns that are right here. So this is the return of my reverb of this board. Now, I want to set this into the floor wedge that they're asking for, and they were asking in it in floor wedge one. So I'm gonna go ahead and press bus one through eight, select, and then go to sends on fader. I now have this reverb or effects return that I can turn up or down in that floor wedge. So start with a little bit and then move a little bit up. Don't just turn it all the way up. Just get enough to where they're happy about it and then we can move on. Oh, well now the drummer in floor wedge two wants a little bit of that with the vocals as well. So that's as simple as it is. So that is a quick and easy way of showing you how to set up the Behringer X32 with some floor wedges. On a different video, I'm gonna be talking about stereo in-ears and how to actually get those set up. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this makes you feel more confident with the production gear that you have. Thanks so much.